Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming ministry of the Reformed Catholic Church. I am also the servant general of a small Franciscan community, the Franciscans of Mercy. And today we will be discussing the reflections and readings for the Feast of the Baptism of Christ. You know, you'll notice that the feast days sort of follow a pattern. We had the birth of Christ. The season of Advent was celebrating uh, that period of anticipation that all families go through when the mother is expecting. Expecting, that's a good word. And finally, the great feast day and the joyous feast of the celebration of the birth of a child. And then we have the feast of the Holy Family, which recognizes the family unit and the importance of it. Then we have all of the visitors coming to look upon the new child and to bring their gifts to the child. And then, just as in real life, we come to the baptism of Christ. And the readings for the feast celebrating the baptism of Christ are wonderful reminders of the truth of God's teachings and his everlasting love and mercy for all of his children. In Titus 2, we hear, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age where we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Eager to do what is good. I have to wonder, is everyone out there eager to do what is good? I find that somewhat difficult to wrap myself around, because it doesn't seem like everyone is eager to do what is good. But that reading, that reading is an affirmation that God never discriminates or rejects anyone, at least not anyone who loves him, and comes to him seeking forgiveness, he's going to forgive them. Anyone seeking comfort and inner peace will find it in God. As followers of Jesus Christ, that's what we can find. That's what Christ came to make sure that we knew how to find it. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 21 through 22, we read, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him 
in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I try to envision what all the people who were there thought when a dove descended upon Jesus and a voice thundered from the heavens, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I try to envision that, and one thought is everyone would cower, but they were baptized, they had the Spirit, and maybe they felt elated and joyous and happy. God, Almighty God, the creator of the universe himself is proclaiming that Christ is his son. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to wrap ourselves around that more than once has Almighty God made it known that Jesus Christ is his Son and that we should listen to him and follow his teachings if we want to achieve eternal life in heaven. So, you might say, well, how do I go about doing that? It's very simple. Christ told us. He gave us the Beatitudes. In fact, he gave us a parable about the great king who talked about how those people were going to be invited to the feast because when he was hungry, they fed him. When he was naked, they clothed him. When he was homeless, they gave him shelter. We were told what to do and how to do it. So why do we refuse to do it? Why is it so many people find it difficult to do? We need, as Christ did, to treat everybody the same. We cannot discriminate. We need to give justice and equality to everybody. We need to care for the sick and the aged and the poor. We can't separate and say, oh, no, 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 you can't do this, no, no, no. We cannot cast anyone aside if they are seeking to follow Almighty God. We should not be judging people because of their race, their nationality, even their religious beliefs. 
especially if they're worshiping the same God that we're worshiping, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Christ said, and I quote, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. This is the greatest in the first commandment. And the second is like, and you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. My dear brothers and sisters, it can't be any clearer. It can't be any plainer or easier. Yet somehow we keep adding a whole lot of strings, making it difficult for some people to express their love of God. We set all, up all kinds of barriers and restrictions that often cause people to feel that God does not want them. And God loves everybody. God loves everybody. What God dislikes and hates is sin. Is Paul, St. Paul says in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, if I give away all my possessions and I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on having its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes in all things, and endures in all things. Love never ends, because Deus Caritas Est, God is love. Therefore, we need to be more God-like. We need to be more loving. As John says in chapter 4, verse 16, God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. Christ was baptized. The Holy Spirit descended upon him in the sign of a dove. A voice from heaven proclaimed, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, listen to him. And this will happen again in Scripture. Christ is the fulfillment of all of the pro ancient prophecies of the Old Testament that proclaim the coming of the Messiah. In Isaiah 42, verses 6 through 7, 
It says, faithfully, he brings true justice. He will never waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on the earth. For the islands are waiting his law. I, the Lord, have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as a covenant of the people and a light of the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison and those who live in the darkness of the dungeon. Jesus Christ fulfilled all of these prophecies. He healed the sick and the lame, restored the dead to life, opened the eyes of the blind, the ears of the deaf, made the lame to walk, and freed all of us, freed all of us from the captivity of sin through his passion and death and resurrection. My dear brothers and sisters, as followers, true followers of Jesus Christ, we need to diligently, diligently love. Love one another as Christ loved us. We need to reach out to others to make sure that nobody that we know is going hungry. We need to extend our hands of friendship instead of bullets and weapons of war and destruction. We need to be more charitable and compassionate to those in pain. We need to be patient, kind, and put aside the petty jealousies that cause so much dissension. We need to get rid of all the arrogances and we need to rid ourselves if we have greed or if we're trying to be domineering. And we need, most of all, to become more godlike to become living expressions of Almighty God. O oh God, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Those are from the prayer of St. Francis. It's attributed to St. Francis. That, but that's what we need to do. It is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. So let us celebrate the baptism of Christ by recognizing the gift that we were given at our baptism of the Holy Spirit and allow the Spirit to work within us to make us more God-like and more Christ-like. May God bless us and keep us. May he let his light shine upon us and fill us with his infinite mercy and love. My dear brothers and sisters, until we meet again, I invite you, please visit our website, www.mission, the word mission, S-T-S-E-R-G-I-U-S dot O-R-G. There you will see updates on what's happening. You'll be able to see the weekly TV show, read the homily, and if you're so inclined, Put your cursor on the donate button where you can safely and securely make a donation. For it is through the generosity of our donors that we are able to do the work of our ministry. For without it, nothing would happen. So may God bless you and keep you. 
May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.